good afternoon. Uh, I wanted to say a few words about the situation in uh, Venezuela. Uh, obviously, we are seeing the Venezuelan people uh, strive to get a government that they control, not have a government controlled by uh, an authoritarian military regime that in turn is controlled by Cubans and other forces external to Venezuela. Uh, this is obviously a very serious situation. Uh, the president has been monitoring it minute by minute throughout the day, uh, as have his advisors. Uh, we see this now as a potentially dispositive moment in the efforts of the Venezuelan people to regain their freedom, which we fully support. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, speculation, comment in the media about what's happening in Venezuela. We think it's uh, still very important for key uh, figures in the regime who have been talking to the opposition over these last three months uh, to make good on their commitments to uh, achieve the peaceful transfer of power uh, from the Maduro clique to interim president Juan Guaido. Figures like uh, Defense Minister Vladimir Padrino, uh, Chief Judge of the Venezuelan Supreme Court Mikel Moreno, uh, the commander of the Presidential Guard Rafael Hernandez Dalla, uh, all agreed that Maduro had to go. Uh, they need to be able to act this afternoon. Uh, or this evening to help bring other military forces to the side of the uh, interim president. Uh, the Cubans, we believe, have uh, uh, played a very significant role in propping Maduro up today, possibly with uh, help from the Russians. That's the speculation, certainly, in Caracas. We think this demonstrates why we need Venezuela ruled by the people of Venezuela and not by external forces. Uh, that's what we're looking at, and I'd be happy to answer a few Mr. questions. Mr. in any danger, sir? Well, Juan Guaido is uh, out on the streets of Caracas now. He's rallying the people. He's called for the people to come out, and they are. They are increasingly on the streets. As I think many of you know, there were mass demonstrations planned for tomorrow. Uh, the circumstances of uh, what's happened today uh, in Caracas have called people out all over the country. Uh, so uh, Guaido is behaving in the same courageous way he and other figures in the opposition have these last three months. Uh, we know that over 40 people have been killed by the Maduro regime in the course of these protests. Uh, this is an act of bravery by Guaido and others. Uh, really for the freedom of the Venezuelan people. Ambassador, given, given what you've seen on the ground so far today and the degree of loyalty that Maduro still seems to enjoy from elements of the Venezuelan military, what do you think the chances that this uprising will work on? Well, I don't think it's support in the military for the Maduro regime. I think it's fear. I think it's fear of the 20 to 25,000 Cuban security forces in the country. Uh, I think it's fear of the consequences if uh, adhering to the constitutional mandate of the interim president fails. But I think really now what we're seeing is the people of Venezuela, this has been building for a long time, uh, that if this effort fails, uh, they will sink into a dictatorship from which uh, there are very few possible alternatives. It's a very delicate moment. I want to stress again, the president wants to see a peaceful transfer of power from Maduro to Guaido. That possibility still exists if enough figures uh, depart from the regime and support the opposition, and that's what we'd like to see. We want to see Defense Minister Padrino, the Chief Judge of the Supreme Court, Mikel Marino, in particular, Rafael Hernandez Dalla of the Presidential Guard. Yes, sir. What happens if uh, Guaido is not able to take power today? What's the next step? Well, I think it's, uh, it's possible this situation could persist. I think the people have, uh, have shown they're prepared to protect Guaido. Uh, we don't see any indication uh, that there's any substantial part of the military that's ready to fire on innocent civilians, their fellow countrymen. 
We know that the Cuban organized colectivos, these thugs, these motorcycle gangs that the Cubans have put together uh, are out uh, protecting certain buildings uh, controlled by Maduro, not the military, but the colectivos. Th this really demonstrates the depths to which the Maduro regime has sunk, that they're using these Cuban uh, directed thugs to conduct their affairs. Uh, and it's one reason why I think there's such overwhelming public support for Guaido. It needs to be translated into a transition of power. Ambassador, 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 Ambassador. Is the U.S. prepared to use any option, including a military option, to support Juan Guaido? Let me say two things to be very clear. Number one, we want as our principal objective the peaceful transfer of power. Uh, but I will say again, as the President has said from the outset, uh, and that Nicolas Maduro and those supporting him, particularly those who are not Venezuelan, should know is all options are on the table. Sorry, say that. Say is that again. Is the administration providing any other type of support other than peace of support, and is this a coup? Uh, we're, we're providing support in a variety of respects. Certainly we have done everything we can to get humanitarian assistance uh, into the country. We're doing a lot of other things, some of which I'm not going to talk about. Uh, and we're certainly working with the Lima Group, the Organization of American States, the over 50 countries that support uh, Guaido's legitimacy democratically. Uh, and let me answer the last part of your question. This is clearly not a coup. We recognize Juan Guaido as the legitimate interim president of Venezuela. And just as it's not a coup when the president of the United States gives an order to the Department of Defense, it's not a coup for Juan Guaido to try and take command of the Venezuelan military. Sir. Ambassador, you said all options are on the table still for military action. And I wanted to ask you about a different military action that you did advocate, the Iraq war. Was that a mistake, invading Iraq? Uh, as I've said before, uh, I've got a lot of opinions I've expressed over many years in the public space. Those were my opinions. What I'm speaking about now uh, is the policy of the U.S. government, and I've answered the question on force before. Do you feel that this moment that we're in right now is sort of a building block, or do you think it is the moment, the tipping point as, as to where something needs to happen? Well, I think from the perspective of uh, the humanitarian crisis that we face in Venezuela, I hope this is enough to tip Maduro out of power because it's only when uh, he and his fellow kleptocrats who have plundered the Venezuelan economy uh, for the last 20 years are removed from power that uh, we can put the Venezuelan economy back on its feet for the, for the benefit of the people. The sooner Maduro is gone, the sooner is the possibility of, of uh, justice and real economic growth for the Venezuelan people. Can you address, were you surprised at all by today's action? Were you given a heads up? And can you address reports from Venezuela that some of the military officials that were supposed to support Guaido actually backed away when it was moved a day earlier? Uh, uh, I'll just say we, we feel very well informed about what's going on and the point I was making a moment ago by naming specifically the Defense Minister Vladimir Badrino, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court Mikhail Marino, uh, and the Commander of the Presidential Guard Hernandez Dalla, uh, as is well known to the opposition all across Venezuela, they committed to support ousting Maduro and it's time for them now if the Cubans will let them do it uh, to fulfill their uh, commitments and it's time for the rest of the military to, to show what their own families believe ought to happen and that's Maduro needs to go. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you so much. My question is if, uh, if actually Maduro forces fire against the people in Venezuela, Guaido's forces, will the United States send troops or act in any, uh, use any kind of military action at this decisive moment. Yeah. Well, as I've said, I, the, all options remain on the table. I'm simply not going to be more specific to that. But recall that right at the beginning, three months ago, we said that it would be a big mistake for Maduro and those supporting him to use force against innocent civilians. We feel very strongly about it. We felt that way then. We feel that way now. Mr. Ambassador, yes, ma'am. We've seen video footage of uh, protesters seemingly being run over by tanks in the streets in Venezuela. What is the point at which you think in force in, is enough force for you all to step in? Well, we're watching very carefully what's happening. As I say, we've been trying to uh, explain to everybody who will listen that we want people to go through with what they've agreed to do in terms of 
transitioning power. Uh, I don't doubt that there are colectivos, these uh, motorcycle gangs organized by the Cubans, and I, th I don't doubt there are some uh, in the Venezuelan military itself who don't view the lives of their fellow Venezuelans highly. We don't know exactly what the command structure is now, other than probably it reports to Havana. Uh, I saw that film myself. It could be an isolated incident. We're not going to draw conclusions uh, imprudently. It's something that we want to stress as much as we can uh, how closely we're following it and how much we want uh, this peaceful transfer of power to uh, proceed. I'll just take one or two more. Yes, sir. Why don't you give them temporary protected status? I'm sorry, I can't. If you stand with Venezuelans, why is the U.S. giving them temporary protected status here? Look, we have that question under review. Obviously, our hope is that we can get a change in the regime in uh, Caracas as soon as possible so that Venezuelans can return and help rebuild their country. We don't want to send anybody back into what is now obviously an even more dangerous situation, and that's the policy we've been pursuing. Yes, ma'am. Have you or the president spoken with Juan Guaido, and given the sort of influence of the Russians here, has the president spoken with or planned to speak with Putin? Do you plan to speak with your Russian counterpart? Well, I'd rather not get into those kinds of conversations. I can tell you we've made it clear to Russia in both public and private statements uh, throughout this that we regard the uh, actions that they've taken in Venezuela as something that we regard with the utmost seriousness, uh, and particularly now when innocent Venezuelan civilian lives are on the line, we expect the Russians not to interfere in what's happening in Venezuela. And if they do, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma the White House considering an executive order, um, something to protect Venezuela from predators. Well, we've, we have followed in the financial markets all of the consequences of the sanctions we've imposed. Uh, we're looking to follow through with more specifics on those right along. Uh, and so there are a number of steps that are in preparation. I, I should also say that we have been planning for what we call the day after, the day after Maduro uh, for quite some time. And indeed, we're thinking of having a briefing on Thursday or Friday of this week. Uh, I think we may speed that up. But we wanted to point out that uh, it's been very much on our mind that we can provide uh, a lot of assistance to the Guaido government when it assumes power to try and get the Venezuelan economy out of the ditch that Maduro has put it in. Those plans obviously were moving ahead on trying to refine them uh, here in these recent days because uh, because things might move quickly. Let me just take one Sir, one more no question. Yes, ma'am. Administration to labeling the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist. Uh, it's not a question about Venezuela. I'll take one Venezuela question. Yes, sir. Let's say this works. Uh, Guaido takes power. Uh, everything is as uh, the administra your administration would like. Will the administration be turning its attention to other equally oppressive regimes, say uh, Russia, Turkey? Philippines that are equally uh, repressive and, and destructive to human rights, sir? Well, I just say in this hemisphere, we've uh, we've called out the troika of tyranny, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba. There's no doubt that Cuba in particular has benefited from uh, the authoritarian government in Venezuela by getting below world market oil prices. Uh, that's going to cease once Guaido takes power. But our focus right now, as you can well understand, for the benefit of the people of Venezuela uh, and because of the interest of the United States, uh, is on this peaceful transition of power in Venezuela. Thank you very much.